Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual topics and we conduct the activities of the program here. I try to clear your doubts and answer your questions regarding the program content and this is a good opportunity for newcomers to get a glimpse of the path of knowledge. So all questions are most welcome. Siddharth is asking I am in step 4 of the program. I have very few dreams now and not much attention is paid to dreams that occur due to busy schedule. If you try to find the cause of the dreams, you will see that mostly that is a replay of our daily activity. Whatever remain unfulfilled, whatever our fears are in the daytime, whatever happened in the past and it is a meaningless jumble of those scenes. That is what is a normal dream. So that is not happening and uh, what does it mean that probably there is no need of doing this meaningless activity now and why is there no need because the mind thinks that this is totally unnecessary. So these kinds of effects are seen when you start your awareness practice. What is awareness doing is checking what is necessary what is not and the same tendency keeps or working in the night time also and probably some mechanism there thinks that this jumble of images, sounds, whatever, imaginary stuff is no longer necessary. So this can happen, yes, very normal. Many people have reported this thing. There is another way to explain this is that the dreams are unconscious activity of the mind. There is more uh, traditional way to answer this thing. And since you are trying to be conscious, using these word conscious and conscious in a popular way since you're trying to be conscious now there seems to be no need of the unconscious activity in the same way suppose you were a daydreamer you used to get lost in the daydreams fantasies imaginations worries worries also a daydream now the awareness ensures that you that does not happen because it's totally unnecessary. Because the thinking, the imagination, the creativity can happen. It is not that it is destroyed. But the unnecessary, unintelligent activity stops. This is the magic of the awareness. Being aware, being in the present, being in my true nature causes these things. So nothing to worry at all. My suggestion is to simply remain aware in the daytime and this awareness will continue in the night time or will continue in your night dreams, daydreams, whatever dreams, whatever you have left over. So uh, if you are not able to do the dream practice, nothing to worry, these are optional practices and I think it is not there in the version 2 of the program now. So only the waking state practice is worth doing. The other stuff falls under Tantra. You will get a lot of time. You are very young. The rest of your life can be spent in exploring the manifestation. There is um, an opposite thing that happens for some people that they had no dreams at all or they never remembered their dreams. When they start the awareness practice, after a few weeks, they start getting the dreams. They start remembering, remembering each and every detail of their dreams. Now, what is the explanation here? The explanation is very simple. The dreams were always there because there was total darkness, total lack of awareness there. That seeker never noticed that activity. And now, since there is a little bit of light, it looks like that. Why are there so many dreams now? They were always present. And the lights were off. Now you can see them. You can remember them. And there is a third category of people who have advanced a little bit and their dreams they turn into waking dream. Another name is lucid dream or aware dream. Now there is no difference between their waking and their dream. So there are many possibilities. You should explore whatever you can and if something happens the other thing does not happen nothing to worry you see. This is not our goal <laughs> to take a look at these random images in the night time is not our goal. Always remember this thing. Our goal is to remain aware whatever happens, whatever appears in the screen of the experiencer. If you are doing that successfully, your sadhana is complete, your practice is perfect. If at all you are interested in cultivating the dreaming experience, 
then I would suggest you wait and uh, join the Tantra Bodhi later on, after probably after two three months. You see, I keep saying that I'll launch it in two three months, and I'm saying this since two three months. <laughs> My work is going on. Yes, write about the waking state. There's hardly anything to write about the dreaming state. Yes, waking state is the most important, and path of knowledge is the whole and complete. The rest is, you can say, leisure activity to mess with the dreams, to mess with the projections, and so on. And no knowledge will be gained. Nothing will be perfected by that. This I keep saying. Lila is saying writing down your dreams help with remembering. If you are doing the dream practice, then follow the procedure. By procedure, I mean the, these tricks are given in the videos. Actually, when you are told to do the awareness practice, there is no mention. There is not much importance of the state there. What state you are in is not very important. Yeah, the ultimate goal is to remain aware in all the states, all the changing states. But uh, we start from the waking. That is most important. Siddharth is asking, you mentioned sometimes about blockages that seekers are restricted. Some progress. Why so? I'm uh, is not able to experience different projected, projected states, one of them. Actually, blockage means uh, some kind of defect, some kind of um, problem, issue. So, uh, we also call it impurity, which means some kind of process in the mind is not working as it should, not working perfectly, or it is working in an abnormal way, producing some kind of mental sickness. And uh, for the path of knowledge, the worst kind of blockage is not able to understand the teachings. That is the worst. There can be many different kinds of blockages. For example, a really common one is not able to pay attention continuously to the teachings, to the guru, to the books. Not able to meditate or contemplate more for more than two minutes, three minutes. That is the attention span is very less. It's a very common blockage. Another example of blockage is uh, unhealthy body. Body has pains, the body is lethargic and uh, so on, you see, weak, disabilities, blindness, deafness. So these are called shortcomings or blockages, whatever you want to call them. And uh, obviously that stops the progress or slows down the progress. The, the seeker progress is very, very slow compared to somebody without the blockage. And yes, there can be more uh, subtle kind of blockages like some kind of emotional issues you know the person hates the guru and is totally incapable of accepting even the truth that he knows uh, something like this you see very twisted things can be there in the mind but uh, what about the projected states you see the blockages means a defect but not experiencing the projected state is not a defect it is normal only that the seeker has not explored the potential. I'll give you an example. Suppose you have never driven a car. Because you don't have a car and probably you are young, so don't have that license also. So are we going to call it a blockage that you are incapable of driving the car? No, you have the potential. You can become a good driver if you start practicing now. Get the license, start driving. In no time you will become perfect in driving. So when people say, no, I cannot experience the projected states or any other uh, uncommon state like the Dhyan state or Samadhi state, whatever state. And that simply means that they never tried properly. Or they tried something, they heard here and there some tricks and they spent a total of 10 minutes on that trick. Oh, I don't get the Samadhi. Oh, I don't get the projection. Then... <laughs> It's not called a blockage, it's called laziness. Yes, there can be a blockage, you see. There can be blockage that can prevent the projected states. But how will you know that if you don't practice it? And remember, since many, many lifetimes, you are accustomed to the waking state and then a sharp transition to the sleep. Do you know anything else? It takes hardly a few seconds to transition from waking to sleep. You can observe somebody, probably won't be able to, able to observe yourself. They're talking, 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 gone. Or they're looking at the fan, gone. This is how fast it happens. Why? Because totally automated function. And the projection is totally 
relying on the border between the sleep and waking as you know that the method that is given recommended by me is to let the body go to sleep but keep the awareness on to let the memory function not turn it off and it takes a lot of practice especially this method takes a lot of practice how much practice those who have past life impressions active they will take at least 7 days but those who have never done it can take 7 years 10 years 20 years i've heard this thing people are doing it since 20 years and so on but i don't think that really doing it or they have any guru or they have any purpose behind the practice because if you don't give the mind a purpose the mind uh, does not take it seriously that is what is called intention sankalp it has to be meaningful for you it has to be your personal adventure or a goal you must invest in it you must be tremendously passionate and attracted to this practice otherwise no it won't happen the habit is very very strong to remain in the waking or to go in the sleep that habit is very strong and what is recommended on the path of knowledge don't worry that is what they say on the path of knowledge don't worry this is also normal but in the occult it's a failure of occult actually if you cannot do it <laughs> if you cannot reach the altered state or whatever they call it projected state the practitioner has failed badly so what do we do we concentrate on the waking state and we come to know that if there is a blockage because of which the projected state is not happening only after many years of practice it is not very easy to find out the blockages of that kind as you can guess you are doing the awareness practice in the waking state and you come to know the problems or you don't even know but you know that it's not i'm not progressing and the guru can find out very easy the guru can talk to you and find out what is the problem what where is the blockage or if, even if it is not a blockage something some issue here and there but what about the projected state this total darkness lack of awareness there is no context there is no language Who, how is it even possible to find out what is happening there so even the master must be highly evolved for that by which i mean that the guru must have gone through that kind of training many many times it must be his profession by which i mean he must be a real master in the art of projection only then he can guess a little bit what is happening with the student and as you know our path is path of knowledge so you can find expert in the waking state not in the projected state and then it is mostly your luck so if you manage to get to some length there some distance like you are experiencing the sounds or the visions you are able to separate yourself your projected body from the physical body etc etc after that we can start digging where is the problem usually it's not a blockage it's simply lack of practice so everybody has the potential and if they are not able to experience the projected state we don't call it blockage leela is asking i have not had any projections that were intentional they just kind of happened like a spontaneous awareness inside the dream yes that is the sign or you can say that is the indication that there was some practice in the previous births or there is uh, some kind of extraordinary blessings on you <laughs> sometimes these experience experiences are, are given by which i mean if the student shows a little bit of potential they are given for that student even if the student has no talent at all no practice nothing has never seen these things before and that is what we call the blessing or, or the grace kripa that is done sometimes it can be found out easily you had a very very awesome projection experience but just once or twice and then you keep trying nothing happens you just fall asleep and there is a very good chance that it was given like this you can find out and why it is given so that you don't give up your practice it is like giving a chocolate to a school boy so that he, so that he keeps going to the school isn't it cookies so that kind of motivation makes him come to the school attend the classes do the homework and so on so we are like babies for the guru field and they keep doing this kind of things and courageous only the sincere seekers the lazy daisies they are not given any attention anjali saying how does the 
transition from physical body to astral body feel like? What all happens during that transition phase? I have few experience of the state afterwards, but uh, I was never able to maintain awareness during the transition. It's full blackout. It uh, seems like a floating sensation that you are rising above the body. That is the most common. There can be another like spinning, and there is very funny one like falling. It's not funny actually. Some people don't like it. It feels like I fell, and then the body then wakes up with a shock. What happened? If you are practicing, then it will be smooth rising, smooth uh, like a balloon. The astral body rises out of the physical, and yes, there will be blackness initially because the non-physical senses are not online. They come online only after a good amount of practice, and um, to bring it online quickly, we use the intention. That is the traditional method. Another method, and that is also traditional, is imagination. you never shut down your senses non physical senses you keep imagining you keep a scene alive in your uh, non physical sense vision or whatever or you combine many senses which are non physical and that is called imagination in the ordinary language but in the occult the imagination means totally something totally different it is not a fantasy it is not a, something false fake in the occult the imagination is uh, true it is a tool it produces results so my um, suggestion to anjali is more practice and uh, if there is a blackout during the transition nothing to worry if you gain back the awareness you make the intention to activate the non physical senses it is okay it is fine you see the beggars are not choosers you are getting something that is good enough you know continue with it slowly that blackout will be gone and actually it may feel like blackout but there is actually it's not a blackout because there is nothing to see or do for a few seconds where the physical senses have shut down but the non physical are not yet active so there is this gap and nothing goes into the memory because there is nothing to store in the memory so it looks like that i blacked out i was unconscious but nothing to worry you see this is the process and if you don't feel rising out of the body then also it's okay you should feel light just like air you should feel free that feeling is totally different when you have lost the body the physical body then you can simply get up and walk fly whatever you want and there are more advanced kind of projections where you simply appear in the non physical world that does not mean that the body disappears here this, the, there are no bodies now simply the scene appears on the screen there is no need to go through this drama of leaving the body and getting the body walk walking through <laughs> via the body going out of the room and so on that is the advanced kind of projection where you make the experience appear on demand that is the best and there is no blacking out there is no sensations weird things noises nothing happens and there is even more advanced version where while waking you are completely aware of another world non physical areas so but you are starting so no problem at all keep practicing one glimpse of the non physical is enough to tell you that uh, everything is an illusion you don't even need to know how it got, got created and what created and which layer and what vibration nothing is needed it is like tasting the sugar you can read a book on how sweet the sugar is but you don't know <laughs> really then you eat little bit of sugar then same way you can keep talking about the illusion all day but uh, these experiences they tell you what illusion is in front of your eyes it is illusion right now realizing not to take everything so seriously yes don't take everything seriously but the things that need to be taken seriously should be taken seriously by which i mean do that which is necessary isn't it even though it is an illusion this lifetime the waking state is also a projection now we should utilize it otherwise why why is there a need of having it there was no need of this experience so don't take all those events seriously which are completely useless a distraction on your path but yes you should take something seriously like your practice <laughs> probably your guru seeker is saying are there many birds 
it is confusing because most of the time we say there is no birth are there different points of view you see that which you are is never born never dies it is the existence it is the brahman never changes also eternally same eternally the witness so then what is born something you know some experience happens some structures appear and disappear then how many unlimited whose births are they nobody's they simply appear then why does it look like i was born that is ignorance avidya somebody told you you were born and that was accepted without critical analysis are there different points of views the witness has different points of views yes how many infinite what is the real point of view there is no real point of view all are illusions so why are these questions still there in your mind because you never had a guru you never walked on any path on, on any path you never systematically studied any spiritual topic so it is highly recommended to start from the a b c d seeker is asking how does past life sadhana help one in this life it is actually not needed if you have a good guru nothing is needed from the past if there is some past life practice then you can continue where you left off that means this this lifetime in this lifetime it will be easier to pick up the practice that's all simply because it is difficult simply because there is lack of knowledge we try to discipline the seeker by whatever works whatever method works we try to teach them but i always see lack of discipline in people and that is that is the cause of uh, slow progress actually when i started this practice nobody had to tell me to do it or to discipline myself in that and the passion was so much that it required me to get up at 3:30 am in the morning or in the night it is the same method you wake you stay awake for one hour or 30 minutes then you go to sleep and by early morning you should be out of your body and at the time i was doing a job also now you can understand how much dedication it takes plus i was so passionate that if somebody told me that look don't eat this this will make you drowsy or whatever that is you know and life energy or pran or whatever they call it it will reduce this you don't have sex before this you know whatever they somebody told me because i had no proper guru at that time i did it if it helped in the practice whatever kind of sacrifice it was whatever kind of discipline it required i immediately implemented it like she said write down your dreams just fill my diaries with the dreams even the most stupid kind of dream i used to write it down this much dedication is needed so it is not that uh, people have not have not been successful in this kind of practice in our program they were successful but all of them had the past life tendencies nobody picked it up in this lifetime this is what was seen actually i got some uh, feedback from the videos that you know some people watched my videos on the projection and in two or three day, days they automatically got the projection how is that possible you need so much discipline you need so much practice and that fellow gets it without doing anything and there is only one explanation that they have done it they have done the discipline practice they have taken the trouble since many lifetimes they are doing this and this video simply reminded them there was some deep trigger there and then you know just like you don't need to teach a fish to swim you don't need this kind of practitioner to project you don't need to teach him to project so discipline is the key once you get the knowledge simply knowledge is not going to give you the experience and what experience do you need you need to do it only once or twice because on the path of knowledge we all we want is to simply confirm that our teaching about every experience being the illusion is really true this is a fact and this is simply another experiment to confirm it although it is very powerful experiment it seals the deal and yes your direct experience and logic and intellect they are actually effective in knowing that this is a dream but some people are not convinced by that <laughs> they don't get that shock oh no this is a dream yes because it is uh, very intellectual by which i mean that very difficult to believe that this is a dream that much is our intention and that is why this intention helps in getting there because when you don't have any intention let us say you simply want to do it for fun 
or you want to check whether these people they keep saying these things is is it really true or not that much only you are you are not serious about it but once you have the intention i want knowledge i want to confirm my guru i want to cross check my guru and i'll do whatever it takes which does not mean madness you should do it properly no need of doing anything extreme so this intention if it is strong and you repeat it every day before doing the practice then i am doing it for this only to solidify my knowledge and then pray to whomever you want to pray that let this happen please you know i did that <laughs> because if somebody is desperate that fellow will do everything possible so yes you need to be thirsty hungry desperate and read everything listen to, to every video and just immerse yourself in this desire and then something can happen you see so those who are really interested they should join the tantra bodhi because you see whatever i said just now is never told in our path of knowledge program what do we say keep the awareness on that's what that's what i tell you and the real juice is never given which comes into the occult there are you know extreme methods also like sleep deprivation and uh, fasting and who knows what for some people they can be effective but we never recommend it but we recommend dedication discipline prayer intention a good good intention which means an honest intention to get the knowledge and many people fail in this thing because they don't have um, honest intention they don't have anything serious behind their effort so they fail sometimes there is just like let me try it if it happens it happens you know then it will never happen you see mother nature is very much possessive about this thing she does not want anybody to know what is beyond the physical although this is not true this is just a metaphorical way poetic way of saying but this is how we feel why everybody is not born with this kind of gift everybody is born with eyes and ability to speak and ability to walk why everybody is not born with the ability to project because mother nature wants only those to experience her bigger illusion mahamaya only after they grow up a little bit by grow up i mean grow up spiritually little bit of spiritual progress is needed then you are promoted otherwise you <laughs> you are limited to this one experience so you should not oppose mother nature here whatever we call as devi or maya goddess we should not oppose her we should hold her hand she wants your good so hold her hand and then go where, wherever she is taking you she wants you to progress first and then experience all this mesmerizing experiences then yes you should say yes no no who wants to progress i just want a little bit of fun here and there non physical kind of fun like this show in the movies then this mother nature is not really interested arvind is asking is guru field also interested in eradicating misery from this world we see so many human being suffering in so many ways life physical diseases hunger lack of basic condition in so many places in the world is guru field interested to do something about it yes yes they are doing whatever can be done but their point of view is very wide compared to our point of view i don't think that any guru sees the misery or pain as bad they see it as the dual experience the dualist experience because the existence is whole complete perfect so it must have everything so can you eradicate it completely impossible isn't it it is just like saying that uh, given a white paper can you draw only with white color and, and you know produce a beautiful painting no you must draw with a black color and then this this black and white combination produces a beautiful picture that is perfection it takes dark to appreciate light it takes suffering to appreciate joy this teaching must be had directly first hand so if you eradicate misery yes kind of in mature point of view their point of view is very big probably we, we won't even understand it because you know the creatures don't actually progress if they don't suffer somehow this is the mechanism here and what is suffering actually it is an illusion so would you like to eradicate the illusion uh, is meaningless because the happiness is also illusion we want this kind of illusion not that kind of illusion so again a limited thought here 
what they are interested in now i'm telling you the secret of the guru field they are interested in utilizing the suffering so that you ask for the teaching otherwise we'll never ask it who am i nobody wants to ask this <laughs> how beautiful am i yes everybody wants that if they are not beautiful suffering then the question why is it like this who am i so the guru field wants to exploit this hack this issue in the existence and use it to make the people progress see how beautiful it is they don't want to waste it so who created the diseases hunger lack etc etc they are part of the package you see in india if you get into a car you get the bad traffic and noise and dust and dirt and smoke also that is the part of the package who created this nobody you see so who should remove this nobody yes but there are some people who can use this if they have the agenda to make you progress and yes it is being used very nicely and the biggest of the suffering is death actually if there is no death there there won't be any progress there won't be any evolution so ultimately we see that uh, the negative part is not really bad it is simply the dual of positive part why is there disease because people forgot to maintain their bodies they don't know what to eat and they live like uh, they were live worse than animals animals live in beautiful places you see and humans live in concrete boxes in polluted cities so they are they are the trouble makers really and guru field has no obligation to fix this it is their own doing who created hunger did mother nature create lack of food on this planet no so much of it so much of it that those who have more, uh, a lot of food they eat a little bit and they waste a you know, lot of it so the hunger is created by humans greed is the cause and the guru field has no interest in this greedy people actually who wants to progress yes are you hungry do you know why you are hungry you are in a mess now get out of there how how can i get out of here yes hold my hand this is what guru is saying i am not here to fix the world i am here to help the people progress this is what the guru is saying and you will notice no guru has tried to fix the world and those idiots who have tried to fix it they all failed they actually made it worse you, you can count all your politicians in it it must be one person at a time individual effort like me talking to you nothing can be fixed you see you can only leave the rotten take the fresh why it is rotten your mistake why why am i suffering why are you there why are you in a place where the suffering is the prevalent thing no i am not free i need to be here. that is the problem isn't it ignorance you are not bound here i don't know how to that is why there are teachings <laughs> that is why the guru is teaching you see so ultimately something is being done which is well beyond normal intelligence of humans it is the most perfect thing that is being done not a patchwork here and there now many people ask that you know if the suffering is the illusion happiness is the illusion then why avoid one thing and why prefer the other thing why not accept yes <laughs> accept it is your choice you came here that was your choice no accept just like you go and watch a horror movie that is your choice you spend money on it money means time isn't it and then can you say that please don't show me these horrible pictures it was your choice so you came here in the physical world where the duality is the law there will be black and white otherwise there is no world you need at least two two shades of color and they they need to be opposite that is the law now i accept yes i wanted this immersive virtual reality experience and the reason can be anything the reason can be total fun entertainment you know that is what we say is the play that is my play or it can be a learning experience or it can be both or there can be a, another kind of experience which we call service because i learned a little bit now i need to bring other people out of it that is the bodhisattva tendency that is another reason to take birth here otherwise your desires brought you here nobody else now accept and if you had enough get out of here never come back you are free 
how to do that proper path proper guru proper practice no shortcut no shortcut is given actually the biggest shortcut is the guru you know look at the guru if he could do it you can do it the guru comes as an ordinary person looks like a ordinary person is suffering like ordinary person is ha- happy like ordinary person and even talks the same language like them just to show look i can do it you can also do it that is the motivation there is no magic here if the guru came in a flying saucer <laughs> spaceship radiant form and like a god and walking on air and what not look i am free is anybody going to be impressed by that oh you are this big one almighty and we are like this dirt no i cannot do it so the guru appears as a ordinary human being there is no real guru field without the <laughs> human form what are they doing observe you will know they can shift the entire maya from here to there isn't it but they don't they never do it a guru who is magician will be you know worshiped people won't follow that guru or there will long line of beggars in front of that please do some miracle for me also please make me billionaire tomorrow i have only daughters please do something so that my wife gets sons and so on make my neighbors disappear make me the president you see <laughs> and the real the needy the seekers who are struggling for a bits and pieces of knowledge they won't get access to this kind of guru so a real guru never does any miracle if they do it that is their play probably they want to simply advertise that i am here or sometimes the miracle happen because you know the seeker badly needs it stuck somewhere because of nobody's fault so they add just little bit here and there you married the wrong person now boom divorce unnecessary trouble so they remove it and nobody comes to know what happened actually and the result is you you progress so there are all kinds but the real goal of the guru field is your progress nothing else suppose you you are listening to the recording and the wifi is not working yes that, that is that is a very good uh, prayer there i am not progressing because the wifi is so terrible yes they will fix it don't worry sometimes we should be really careful about what we ask you are asking about a good wifi and the guru field checks that you know that fellow lives in a really bad country <laughs> where there is no no proper internet so they will cause some kind of events there so that you are forced to leave your country and shift to some other country like south korea <laughs> where there is 100 mbps internet free for everybody that can be shocking dramatic experience so we should be careful what we ask from the guru field because if they do it, it you won't be able to really tolerate it instead of recommending you to experiment with the guru field my recommend my suggestion is always pray like this thank you for whatever happened thank you for whatever you have given now please do that which is for my best do that which is in my best interest don't try to use your own intelligence to tell them what to do because obviously <laughs> we don't have that kind of intelligence and this is you can guess is called surrender surrender like the kitten surrenders to its mother we cannot dictate our progress we can only surrender and those who surrender their progress happens very fast this is my current experience actually those who have a lot of resistance don't follow the instructions do whatever they please i see that they don't progress much sometimes they are kicked out completely shushant is asking isn't surrender or not to surrender happen automatically desire thought and then action yes if you say everything happens automatically only there is no doer so when with the right combination of the guru and student the surrender happens it is like with the right combination the love affair happens it cannot be planned so the real test of the guru is that you know if you don't feel any kind of love or surrender for the guru he is not the guru you are wasting your time this is the litmus test of who is my guru you know sometimes it can be incorrect but most of the time this is the test you will always learn anyhow even if you don't like the guru you will learn something from the guru but surrender means then no it is the complete responsibility of the guru to take you to where he is 
so we have in this country we have seen extraordinary amount of surrender and for that you know even if the student is lagging behind and has many many lifetimes to cross the guru keeps coming for the student and obviously they won't come for one they have many like this so surrender is very powerful that means you are giving the whole of your life to the guru and that is why it is so risky also because you surrender to a wrong guru and then you're gone also you surrender to a fake guru and everything bad can happen now that is why the path of knowledge is so special because here surrender means simply removing the resistance to removal of the ignorance somebody wants to remove your ignorance stop resisting this much surrender is required if somebody says you know pay me tons of money or be like my slave and so on you see then there can be problem that is not the path of knowledge then here you remove your resistance to the teaching explore you know be open enough to explore what is being said because what is said is only the evidence evidence is being presented nothing is really said nothing is really claimed look this is how it is this is the evidence what does it tell you this much is said this is what your guru is telling you and then the surrender is so easy because all you need to do is look what he is saying think about it seriously and that is why we have listening as the first phase and it is strictly done which means you are not allowed to move here and there out of listening and that checks your surrender if people are not surrendered no i am not interested because they failed initially so who will waste on their time on such people you say don't want to listen so if there are no questions no more questions we can end today's satsang here hopefully everybody benefited everybody enjoyed and i'll see you next time thank you everybody for attending today's satsang